Hello and welcome to the Monday, October 23rd, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Anybody who has ever touched malware reverse engineering probably knows how useful some of DDA's tools are to accomplish that. One of the tools that he created is base64dump.py. Now, this tool, of course, as the name implies, was initially created to decode base64 data that was sort of found in malware samples and other files. Well, uh, as DDA reminds us today, it can actually do a whole lot more like uh, for example decode a number of hex encodings and the like net bias uh, encodings with like upper lower case and such so if you're interested in some of these advanced features of a base 64 dump well uh, take a look at DDA's diary where he goes over some of these features I probably have neglected a little bit talking about some noteworthy bug bounty write-ups. One of the nice things about bug bounties is that the discoverer often writes up the process, how they found a certain vulnerability and what the root cause of the issue was. Nice example of a vulnerability in the Harvest app and related to OAuth tokens, in particular a Microsoft account OAuth tokens. One problem with OAuth is as uh, the client connects uh, to the authentication server, in this case uh, Microsoft, it will supply a redirect URL that's then being used to redirect the user back to the original application asking for the OAuth credentials. The problem here is, well, uh, that redirect will also include the credentials. And uh, if an attacker is able to provide a malicious redirect, then the credentials are first being sent to the attacker's website, which of course could steal them. Now, this is prevented usually by limiting the URLs that the redirect can point to, typically limited kind of to the uh, host name, sometimes a little bit more specific of the particular app that uses the credentials but if that particular website now does have within the scope of allowed uh, redirect your eyes an open redirect that could be used to then further redirect the victim back to the attacker's site well uh, then we are basically back in the situation that we had before restricting the redirect URIs and that's exactly what's going on here uh, with the harvest app which is of a time tracking app and uh, Microsoft's uh, OAuth credentials good brief write-up and I think if you're implementing OAuth definitely something uh, to pay attention to and uh, take a look at. When teaching this in class, I often find that some of these concepts aren't really all that well understood. So uh, this is a nice sort of hands-on example of what can happen and how this particular attack works. And then, well, Okta is in the news again and not in a great way uh, because, well, apparently their support group uh, was breached and that access was used to then attack customers of Okta. Okta, of course, provides authentication services, which makes them particular uh, critical here for many of their uh, customers. And the problem here, first of all, was that the attacker was able to gain access uh, to the customer service account and then with the customer service account they did have access to support interactions with certain customers and there's a sort of one practice here that i thought stuck out that's something that you probably should avoid as part of sort of supporting customers what Okta apparently often did was ask for an HAR or HAR file. Your browser can easily generate those files and they're basically a list of all the requests and responses that your browser experienced. So it's a real good way to see what happened and of course that's why support people like it to debug what's going on. The problem with this HAR file is well, they have a little bit too much information here as well. 
well. Uh, there are all the cookies with that, of course, session IDs. And well, if you have someone's session ID, you are that user. You don't need any credentials in order to log in doesn't matter how many factors you are asking for. So uh, this is exactly what happened here, that attackers uh, found these HAR files within uh, the uh, customer uh, service interactions they had access to and use that then to then breach additional uh, customers. Apparently, the customers here paid attention and uh, caught it. And that's, I think, really sort of another lesson uh, from this sort of First of all, you know, don't use these HAR files uh, sort of for customer support. Uh, they're good for debugging during development, but not sort of uh, with uh, a live customer data. And uh, secondly, if you do outsource authentication uh, to a company like Okta, and I'm, I don't really want to sort of point out Okta specifically here, that's of a, a general rule. You have to put in uh, some controls. You know, how do you actually sort of watch the watcher here? How do you watch these companies that are now in charge of authentication? I'm sorry for rambling here a little bit, uh, but still want to cover uh, two vulnerabilities quickly that you should keep an eye on. There is a vulnerability in the SolarWinds Access Rights Manager that uh, could be used to escalate uh, privileges. So that's something uh, to patch. And also a couple of updates from VMware for its area operations and VMware Fusion as well as a workstation a product. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.